Here we're going to talk about what we call bolometric magnitude. What is that? Well, just a moment. First, we're going to take a look at what we mean with absolute and apparent magnitude. Apparent magnitude is, of course, how bright a star or a galaxy or something appears to be from our vantage point from the Earth. And absolute magnitude is equal to the brightness or the magnitude or the apparent brightness of a star when it's located at 10 parsec. So, more mathematically speaking, we can say that the absolute magnitude, which is indicated with a capital M, and the apparent magnitude, which is indicated with a small m, we can say that the absolute magnitude is equal to the apparent magnitude when the distance to the star is 10 parsecs. Or another way of saying that is, if we were to place the star in question at the distance of 10 parsecs, how bright would it appear? What would be the magnitude of the star? What would be the apparent magnitude of the star? And that will then be the absolute magnitude. So, if you want to know how what the magnitude is or, or the absolute magnitude is of the Sun, we then imagine what would it would look like if we place the 10 parsecs away. So if we place our Sun 10 parsecs away, the magnitude of the Sun, the parent magnitude would be 4.83 and therefore that's the absolute magnitude of the Sun. So, for example, if the Sun were placed at a distance of 10 parsecs, which is 32.6 light years, the apparent magnitude would be equal to 4.83 of the Sun at with the distance equals to 10 parsecs. So since the Sun would have an apparent magnitude of 4.83 if it was placed at a distance of 10 parsecs, we call that the absolute magnitude. So therefore, the absolute magnitude of the Sun equals 4.83. That's what it would look like if it was 10 parsecs away. Now, the bolometric magnitude is something similar to that. First of all, what we can say is that these magnitudes, the apparent and the absolute magnitude, are based on only the visible light that we receive from the star. So what we do is we, we observe this with a telescope, and then we put a filter on there. Typically, we put a filter that allows visible light to pass through and blocks out infrared and blocks out UV. And so only the visible light gets through, and so we base the apparent magnitude, and therefore the absolute magnitude, on just the visible light we receive from the star. So a star who predominantly puts out visible light will appear brighter than a similar brightness star, which puts out much more infrared and a lot less visible light. But sometimes we're interested in the apparent brightness for the whole perspective of the entire spectrum. So, we're not going to limit ourselves just to visible light. We also want to know how bright the star appears to us, or how bright the star actually is, based upon its entire spectrum, UV, visible light, and infrared. So, if we then allow all of the light to come through, all the various frequencies and wavelengths, then we want to measure the total luminosity of the star, then how bright it appears to us, and based upon that, we give it the apparent magnitude and the absolute magnitude. And then we're talking about what we call the bolometric magnitude. That simply means that instead of just looking at the visible light, we want to see the brightness of the star in its totality of all the various wavelengths. An example of that is the two stars. For example, we have the star uh, Sirius, which is a relatively small star. Well, it's bigger than average. It's a little bit bigger than the sun. It's a little hotter. It's a whitish looking star. And it puts a lot more UV and visible light and not as much infrared. Then we have the very large star Betelgeuse, which is a red giant. Now, I didn't quite draw the relative size of Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse would be bigger on the whiteboard compared to the Sirius being this big, but it's such a large star that it puts out an enormous amount of energy, enormous amount of luminosity, but the vast majority of that luminosity is in infrared and very little visible light and UV are being emitted by Betelgeuse in comparison to the amount of energy it radiates in the infrared, simply because it's a very large star and the surface is relatively cool compared to the surface of Sirius. Nevertheless, since it's so big, it puts out way more energy than Sirius does, yet the absolute magnitude is, or the apparent magnitude, I should say, of Betelgeuse is less than the apparent magnitude of Sirius. But if we were to look at the bolometric magnitude, meaning taking all of the radiation into account, including the enormous amount of infrared radiation that Betelgeuse puts out, then Betelgeuse would have a much greater, a much brighter apparent magnitude 
than Sirius. And so that's why we use the term bolometric, which means including all frequencies. It's a term that's not used very much in beginning astronomy, but you might run into it sometime, and you may also need to realize that, yes, a pair magnitude only deals with visible light. Bolometric magnitude deals with all of the light, all of the energies we get from a star, and we may get a different picture because, let's say, big red giants, they put lots of energy at the infrared, and so we account for that when we talk about bolometric magnitude, and that's how we do that.